Hello and welcome to another special episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio podcast. Um, today it will not be a knitting episode, but rather a little bit of a yarn preview um, of what's coming to the next shop update. Um, I've done these before and it seems that you really like them just because um, yeah, I can showcase the colors a little bit better than just in pictures, for example. Um, so yeah, if you're here to see some knitting content, uh, this is not the episode, <laughs> unfortunately. I will only share what I will have available on this Friday's uh, shop update, which is the 15th of October um, at 8 p.m. GMT plus two. So yeah, but I think it's good to do it in a video format because um, this update is going to be a really big one, even though I didn't anticipate it to be. But uh, yeah, actually uh, I ended up dyeing a lot of yarn that I want to share with you in this little preview episode. Um, I will try and remember to add timestamps just so you can skip from each part of the preview to another one um, and maybe also replay them just so you can make sure and see the colors in depth and maybe make your decisions on what to get. Um, and I hope the light will kind of stay okay because we're having a lot of clouds uh, coming and passing and I don't know, it's getting brighter and darker all the time. So I really hope we can manage somehow, but yeah, I still wanted to give you some time to watch the preview before the update. So I didn't want to push the recording date any further. So yeah. And yeah, let's stop rambling. Um, without further ado, let me show you what we'll have in this update. So in this update, there will be um, our two classic um, BFL Masson bases, so the DK and the four ply base. There will be a little bit of sock yarn and there will be a comeback of the Rustic Merino Worsted, um, which was a base that we used to have um, in the shop earlier, but we discontinued that kind of over the summer just because it's just a very woolly yarn and it's uh, yeah, just not very suitable for summer knitting, I feel. And also, I will have a little bit of a, another introduction to the new limited edition that will be available. I know I've talked about this in depth in my previous podcast episode, but I thought to make it all like a whole preview, I will uh, repeat some of the facts around this new yarn. Um, plus, at the end, I will also talk about um, pre-orders for our festive winter boxes which you might have seen on Instagram um, and I will let you know about how this works what the shipping will be and what will it be in there and yeah what you can expect from it basically um, but yeah let's start out with our BFL Massam DK base um, so Again, just to remind you, this one has 240 meters per 100 grams and um, it's a pretty much straight up DK weight. So I usually knit this with a 3.75 to 4.5 millimeter needles, depending on the gauge I want to get. Um, and it's actually the one that my shawl that I'm wearing is uh, used for. So this is the BFM Massam DK on the very lovely Humble Bee shawl that um, my friend Lerke of Fibre Tales designed and that we had in collaboration with uh, my other friend Eva of the Blue Rabbit House. And um, that was originally designed in a colorway that we will also be bringing back. So it's only fitting to show you. Um, this is the colorway Caramel. And the last two updates, this colorway has been very popular and I can imagine it will be again just because it's such a nice and autumnal color and um, which is why I have tried my very best and dyed double the amount um, of what we had the first time. So I really really hope that everyone who's waiting for this can get their hands on it. Um, but yeah, just so you know, if you're looking for this um, maybe make sure to be on time for the update. By the way, I find this so weird to, to stress about this. Um, 
I don't want to be like, oh, be quick for the update because it's all going to sell out. I really don't want to do that. But um, I'd rather say, please be on time than risking that any one of you might miss out on something that they've been looking for. So yeah, anyways, whenever I'm saying this, I'm not like, oh, <laughs> be quick. Otherwise it will be sold out. But um, yeah, I would just recommend to be on time just so you can make sure you will get everything you want. Um, yeah, so this is the colorway caramel and it has been, yeah, a favorite and almost a classic. Um, another one that has been, that I find very fitting for the autumnal season is Maple Leaf. Come on, focus. Um, this is a slightly more orange toned brown, I would say. And it's just really nice because it has kind of a variegation in it with the red and the brown. And yeah, just so you can see it in comparison to caramel, it's quite a bit more reddish in undertone. So yeah, these are the very autumnal colors, I would say. And to round these autumn colors up, I want to show you this one, which is the colorway Olive. And it's kind of a greeny, greeny yellow. It's a little bit more green on camera than it is in real life, I would say. But yeah, I find these three together basically scream October and fallen leaves and yeah, all these kind of things. So this is the colorway Olive. And yeah, next colorway I want to show you there's a really nice one I feel as well, is the artichoke colorway. This is more of a muted green grey. I think I had this one in the last update as well. Um, and I think it's just really nice and versatile for garments and shawls and everything. So yeah, this is a really nice one that I think would go well with maybe the almond colorway. This is a slightly lighter browny, brown beige color, I would say. Could you focus camera? Hello? And I think um, it's definitely a little bit more of a November kind of autumnal combination, but I think these two go very well together. So artichoke and almond, I think are just very nice together. So yeah, these are artichoke and almond. Next colorway I want to show you, or we're going to the little bit more rosy tones, is um, Marbury. Ooh, this is actually kind of dark in this lighting. It's a little bit lighter in real life, but it's a dark berry with a bit of a brown undertone, like a mix of a berry and a maroon, I would say, with a bit of a variegation as well. And yeah, this one has actually been a classic in the last two updates as well. So I thought I should bring it back. And I actually also dyed a little bit of a larger quantity of this one because I remember you guys liking it very much. Um, so yeah, this is Mulberry. And then we also have the colorway Lavender which is a pretty cool grayish purple. It's a bit more purple than it is on camera, I would say, but it's just very lovely and it has a slight bit of variegation as well. Um, yeah, just so you can see it here. And then we'll have the last colorway, which has already been in the shop for really long. It's almost a classic, I would say. And this is Mountain Rose. And it's more of a muted rose, rosy colorway, if you will. I don't know if it comes, yeah, this is how it looks. So, yeah, this is Mountain Rose. And I really think these two together look so pretty and it's a really nice muted palette together, I think. It looks a bit more brown than it is in real life. Let me see if I can turn the camera up in a way that it's a bit lighter but yeah this is mountain rose and 
Yeah, these are the colorways that I dyed on the BFM SMD K base. As said, it's a 200 meter, no, 240 meter per 100 grams um, base. And um, it is a gray heather base, which is why all the colorways look a bit more muted and a bit more variegated. Um, but that's actually what I really love about this base. And yeah, I just always love dyeing on it because all the colors have a bit of a, like, a lot of depth and they are very rich in a way that they are not as punchy as on a white base which is usually what I like so um, yeah I really like this one so let me know if you want me to show you any kind of combinations because that's always um, what I forget in these kind of yarn previews is showing you um, potential combinations but if you're curious about something make sure to just drop me a message or something and I will gladly show you um, combinations if you're thinking about maybe a color work sweater or something. Um, in general, I would say this yarn is very suitable for shawls as well as garments. I'm knitting my Ava sweater out of this base at the moment, which is um, just the perfect wardrobe staple, I can already tell. But you can hear more about this in my previous podcast episode, which I'm trying to remember to link <laughs> in the little eye. But um, yeah, it's also very nice, as I can say, um, in shawls and stuff, because it's just very... If you are a little bit more sensitive uh, on your neck or something, this is probably one of my softest bases. So um, it's not itchy or anything, at least not to me. So um, I think even sensitive people could wear it next to their um, neck. And so I think this is the most uh, shawl-friendly base. So... Speaking of shawl friendly bases, let's move on to the BFMSM 4 ply, which is actually the thinner version of the BFMSM DK. And that's a fingering um, with 400 meters per 100 grams. And um, I've dyed this one up in similar colorways, just so you can choose um, what colorway you want to go for and then you're not limited to one of the bases so I tried to make some of the classic ones on both bases just so you can choose um, what yarn weight you might want. Um, so let's start out with the colorway Almond. This is actually the one that I'm using for my little <laughs> design attempt, let co let's call it like that, that I have been showing in my last episode. Um, and I've combined this one with a strand of Knitting for Olives ethically produced um, silk mohair. And um, it gives the most lovely squishy fabric and I can only recommend trying it out, especially also because it really goes a long way. Because if you combine it with mohair, you can definitely knit it on like a 4mm needle or something. So a 400m skein on 4mm needles will <laughs> go quite a long way. So um, I think I might get away with like 3 skeins, maybe for, uh, for a sweater for me, um, if I use it with mohair. So yeah, that's the colorway, almond. And I think it's just a very versatile color that is very easy to wear with all other colors, I think. Next up, we'll also have the olive colorway on the BFMS and 4 ply, which I think would make a really nice autumnal shawl, I feel. I don't know, I just always see this colorway in a shawl to add a little bit of a punchy um, accent to maybe a more muted outfit or something so yeah that is olive and we also have the other green um, called artichoke on the BFMSM 4 ply so yeah a bit more of a muted color and a bit more grayish in undertone than the olive one um, and I still have to show you my mom knitted a shawl out of this colorway and it's really beautiful and I, every time I record a podcast episode I forget <laughs> to show you. But next time I will make sure to remember bringing it and showing it to you. Um, next colorway is the Mulberry colorway, which again is equally nice on the four ply base I feel. 
I think it could make a very elegant shawl. I'm actually thinking about making um, maybe like a Christmas shawl or sweater out of this colorway just because I feel like it's very, yeah, kind of sophisticated and definitely suitable for um, a festive event. Let's put it like that. Um, yeah, so this is the mulberry colorway. As said, all these colors, they are a little bit like they are not completely solid. It's uh, always a little bit of a variegation in it, which I just really enjoy. But um, what I would recommend to do is just alternate skeins when you're like using um, several skeins for a bigger project, project like a sweater or something. So yeah, I would just recommend doing it just so you definitely can prevent any kind of color pooling that might happen or something. So, staying with a little bit more rosy tones, we also dyed the lavender colorway on the B of the Mass and Four Ply, as well as the Mountain Rose one. And this is another one where I feel like it screams a shawl to me <laughs> for some reason. Um, and I'm actually planning to make myself one out of this colorway at some point. Um, but yeah, Lavender and Mountain Rose are also available on the BFM Mass and 4 ply. I'm sorry if this is a bit rushed, but I'm trying to get through the colorways kind of quickly, just so I can also tell you a little bit more about the things that might require a bit more of explanation. So, um, yeah. So this one um, is another one of the very autumnal colorways, and it's Maple Leaf on the 4 ply. Could you focus low? Ah, no, here we go. So, yeah, this is the maple leaf colorway. And again, this absolutely screams autumn and Halloween to me. And I just really like it. Um, next up, we're going to have a new colorway, which actually was inspired by the upcoming festive season. I know it's a bit early, but as a yarn dyer and as someone who sends parcels all over the world, I try to um, make sure to think of um, the festive season as early as possible, just because sometimes also with uh, the pandemic happening and everything, parcels can take quite a while to get to other countries. And so I'm already, I thought of already making a little bit of a festive colorway available in this update, just for someone who might want to knit themselves something festive in December or something and making sure that things can be there on time. So yeah, a festive colorway and it's this one. So it's a pretty dark cold undertoned red. It's a bit more bluish in real life I would say and not as punchy. I don't know if I can show you. Oh yeah, here in this light it looks a bit more true to color. So it's pretty bluish in undertone, as said. Not like a orange red, it's more of a um, yeah cooler red. And it has little variegations all over as well. And it's actually not named yet. So if any one of you has a suggestion, <laughs> please let me know. Um, but it's just a colorway that I find is very festive and yeah, I just like it. So these are the colorways on the BFM Mass in 4 ply. As said, it's 400 meters per 100 grams and yeah, it's actually quite a lot. I just realized <laughs> that there are quite a few colorways, but yeah, let's move on to the Corridale sock. Um, in the last two updates, we had uh, sock sets each time, and this time there won't be any sock sets, but rather um, 100 gram sock skeins. So um, no contrasting minis this time. Um, I think there are still a couple of sets left from the last update. Um, but yeah, I, we didn't manage to make new sets. Like I like to put a whole theme over the sock sets every time. And this 
this time I tried to focus on something else than a sock set theme and making a whole collection and stuff. So there were other things to focus on, which I'm going to tell you later. So it's just some good old sock skeins, um, some solid ones and some variegated ones. So uh, for all of, the, uh, of you who don't know, it's um, the Corydale Sock Base is a natural non-superwash plastic free sock yarn that has a particularly high twist to make socks last longer even though there are no artificial fibers added. So um, this base is our standard sock yarn and um, yeah we have it available in every uh, shop update usually and yeah without further ado let me show you the colorways that will be available. Um, starting out with uh, solid colorways um, we are bringing back the rosewood colorway, which was pretty popular in the last update as well. And I find it just a very nice, rosy, muted colorway. And there will be a second solid colorway that is a new one, and it's this one. It's called Aesop which is actually a plant, so it's not something weird I just made up, it's, it's actually a plant. So um, This is the Aesop colorway, and I just think these two together are really nice. So, yeah, these are Rosewood and Aesop, and these are the two only two solid colorways that we will have available. There might be one or two indigo dyed skeins from the last update, if I remember correctly. So there should be more solid colors also with the ones left from the other update. But these are the two new ones that we're bringing. Um, next up, we'll go to the variegated ones. And this one is Harvest. It was in the last update already, but I found it would be nice to bring it back just because it's so very autumn autumnal and reminds me of yeah autumn and apple picking and all these kind of things so this is the harvest colorway oops would you focus maybe yes here we go so it has some rusty red tones some white and some green and yeah, I just really feel like it, it looks like harvesting apples from a tree and yeah, I really like it. So thought about bringing this one back. Then we'll have two new ones. Um, one of them being this one. And this is the grapevine colorway. It is like a dark berry brown tone with white and some blue grayish specks. So this is the grapevine colorway. And then there is another one dyed in a similar kind of style. And this one does not have a name yet, but it will be very soon. It reminds me of some kind of blossom, but I have been naming so many colorways after flowers that I'm kind of a bit tired of it, so I want something else. Um, and these two colorways, by the way, um, they are dyed in a way that they will knit up almost as a self-striping sock. So um, the color is di distributed in a way that um, you won't have like one color pooling somewhere, but it's rather in kind of irregular stripings. Um, so I would recommend knitting those with either a pretty subtle textured pattern or maybe just a vanilla sock because I think it's just a nice effect to see the stripes coming up and um, yeah this someone I remember someone asked me on Instagram um, which are the self-striping colorways that will be coming to the shop so it's these two <laughs> these are the only self-striping ones the other ones are not self-striping in a way, they are more like the color distribution is a bit more random and they are a bit more variegated. Um, so last but not least, 
um, in the last update we had a colorway um, out of the little sock set collection inspired by the Downton Abbey series and um, this one in particular was really popular and you folks seem to have really liked um, this colorway so I thought about bringing it back in a single skein not a sock set but the sock set was called Lady Violet and I've brought this colorway back and it's called Violet without the lady just because I thought it's not the Downton Abbey collection anymore. Let me turn the exposure down a little bit just because I have a feeling we're a little bit light with the colors here. Um, but yeah, this is the Violet colorway. It's just very subtle purple and pinks and some green and I feel this is a nice subtle companion to the little bit more punchy colors that I just recently showed. Um, yeah, so that's all the colorways available on the Corridale sock. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next space. So as mentioned in the little intro I did, um, we will be bringing our Rustic Merino um, base back, which as said was discontinued over the summer just because I felt like a woolen spun worsted weight yarn would be a bit too much for the summer. Um, but I'm happy to bring it back and it's um, all sourced and spun in Germany by a small family run mill and um, the, the sheep's wool is gathered from small farms all within Germany, in southern Germany uh, to be exact. And um, yeah, it's, it's like a more traditionally spun woolly yarn. So I think it's very suitable for color work and anything where you'd like the yarn to bloom quite a bit because um, I don't want to go in depth between the difference of being woolen and worsted spun. I can do that maybe in another episode. But um, if a yarn is woolen spun, it usually has more air in it. So it tends to bloom quite a bit whenever you block it. And yeah, it's just a very nice and rustic yarn that actually blooms quite a bit and is very suitable for color work. Um, so the Rustic Merino is a worsted weight yarn, even though it has a 225 meter per 100 grams, um, but it's quite lofty and quite airy and that's why I would rather knit this on a 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter needle um, on a worsted weight gauge, just because um, yeah, things might be a bit stiff if you go with too small of a needle. Um, for reference, I've knitted my Willa cardigan out of this yarn and um, you can see that one on my Instagram and in my last podcast episode as well. And I did that to test how the yarn behaves. Okay, for some reason the recording just stopped, so sorry. Um, I was just uh, saying that I knitted my Willa cardigan um, out of this yarn and um, yeah, you could really see how the cables pop in this base. So it's very, I would say it's very suitable both for color work and cable knitting. So let's stop rambling and show you the colorways. Um, the colorway I knitted my Willa in is this one and it's called Fossil. It's a very light neutral but with a more of a coolish undertone. So it's like a super light gray, almost a white. So um, I kind of prefer these kind of neutrals to more yellow toned ones. So yeah, this one is the perfect neutral to me, I think. So this is Fossil and Fossil has a darker sibling <laughs> that's called Charcoal. And this is just a very truly dark, is it focusing? No. Now it does. Um, it's just a very dark charcoal color and with the same coolish of an undertone as the fossil. 
and this one is just really yeah really dark and I have to knit myself a sweater out of this for sure um, are we getting really dark again hang on maybe this is better um, and then there are two more colorways a little bit more on the warmer side of the spectrum so this is oatmeal and it's kind of a beigey color will you focus here we go so it's more of a beige not a very warm one but a little bit warmer than the fossil and it also has a darker companion that's called coffee and it's a dark coolish undertoned brown don't know if you can see but yeah these are the two together and whenever I see those two colors together I'm getting major the petite knitter vibes and I feel like I would love to knit one of her color work patterns because yeah I think she's just uh, so good at those kind of neutral color work patterns so yeah these are the four colorways all together so oatmeal coffee fossil and the charcoal one and yeah I'm excited to see which ones you'll like the most um, they are all uh, undyed by the way they are all just in their natural sheepy colors and um, yeah just very neutral ones to pair with other more punchy colors maybe and uh, speaking of undyed yarn I also want to remind you that um, in this update there will be the new limited edition yarn coming that I already talked about in depth in my other podcast episode but this is the 100% Jacob's yarn sourced from uh, Jacob's sheep from the Archivada. Um I told the story in my podcast as well so I'm not going to go in depth again but it's um, just locally sourced, locally spun um, and it's a two ply woolen spun yarn with 250 meters per 100 grams although I would say again being a woolen spun yarn it would be nice to be knitted on a little bit more of a looser gauge so I knitted this one on a 4.5 millimeter needle um, with my visiting cardigan that I also showed in my last episode so yeah I would definitely recommend going a bit up in needle size and letting the yarn bloom a little bit when blocking um I'm getting like again sorry for the light shifts all the time but it's just hard to record in this kind of weather um but yeah I would say um, if you want to get this yarn I have a very small quantity of this one and um, I won't be getting it back in this exact same way so if you plan on making a project out of it make sure you'll definitely get the amount you need and um, maybe an, a safety skein or something just because yeah I won't be getting it again and I have below a hundred skeins so um, yeah, there aren't very many and I wouldn't want any one of you ending up with like a short, too short of a sweater or something. Um, so that's why I'm saying this. And uh, yeah, I've knitted my visiting cardigan out of it and you can see, find all the info about it also on my Instagram because I got quite a couple of questions about this project. And um, I have used around 380 grams of this base for a size 4 sweater which had quite a bit of ease for me but I wanted it to be a bit more spacious and I've cropped it by 10 centimeters so um, if you're looking into making one of those maybe get a skein more than just 400 grams um, just because as I said cropping it for 10 centimeters will save quite a bit of yarn so if you're not planning on cropping it um, maybe go for a little bit more um, and go for maybe 500 grams or something um, yeah I'm open to any 
recommendations. If you're planning on a project with this yarn, let me know and I'll gladly help you determine how much you might need for that. Um, and yeah, as well as all the other questions, I'm happy to um, answer them. But this is again the new limited edition yarn and I just love it. It's really nice. It's really nice and woolly, quite rustic, but in a way that I really like it to be. And yeah, I can't wait to see how you will like it and uh, what projects you might come up uh, to make in it. Um, but yeah, our limited edition. It must be number three now, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, the last thing that will be available in this update is the pre order option for our first um, festive winter boxes. Um, again, this is something I already mentioned in my last episode. Um, but I wanted to remind you that. Um, these are yarn boxes with four skeins of our Coradale sock yarn um, dyed up in four different colorways, two being solid and two being variegated. And um, these will be individually wrapped for you to be opened every week of December leading towards the festive season. And um, just for you to have a little surprise once a week, maybe in the darker days. And yeah, um, there will also be a couple of goodies in those boxes. Um, an art print by my dear friend Claire of Wool and Nature, um, and some stitch markers, and also some beeswax candles that I'm going to make myself for you. And um, Everything will be wrapped um, in sustainable and recyclable materials, so we won't be using any unnecessary plastic or something. Um, and yeah, the box itself, how I'm planning it, it will be a very nice treat. So if you're looking for that, um, to treat yourself with something maybe in the festive season, this is definitely something you could consider. Um, it's the first time I'm doing something like this. I'm probably going to forget telling you about something, but yeah, if anything comes up, just let me know. But the shipping will be in the first week of November. Um, so I really hope everything will be done by that. I'm aiming for that because I feel like it will be a bit late if I ship it later and then maybe some customers from overseas won't be able to open it on time and that's definitely something I want to make possible for you. So yeah, shipping will be at the beginning of November and um, yeah, if you want to purchase a box and some other skeins for the update, you have the opportunity to either shop it all in one and I will um, ship all the skeins ordered on top of the Christmas box or the winter box. I will ship it all together uh, in the beginning of November. Or you can also just place two orders and um, I will ship the ready to ship yarn already before shipping the, um, the winter boxes. So yeah, I think that's everything. And let me know if there are any more questions occurring. Um, I think I've said everything so far and I hope you will enjoy the update. Again, it will be on the 15th, so this Friday, um, 15th of October, 8 p.m. GMT plus 2. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with those time zones, but I will put some reminders in my Instagram stories. And yeah, up until then, I will be available um, to answer any questions. I will also make sure to post a little um, colorway preview on Instagram and until then I hope I could give you a little um, overview on what's going to be available and yeah, let's speak soon in a regular episode. Bye!